E-hailing drivers have reached a boiling point. Every day they face the risk of being hijacked by random criminals or attacked allegedly by their rivals. The escalating attacks have ignited anger. They hear the, the gunshot and uh, Gajeni was screaming outside asking for help from the neighborhood. Then when they go outside they found that uh, Gajeni was uh, shot dead. <laughs> Two drivers have been brutally murdered in the last two weeks and in the past year there has already been seven known fatalities. I regret why I went into this industry. Heaven would be alive today. Special assignment investigates the carnage in this sector and the general working condition that these drivers are subjected to. Moi Gajeni moved to South Africa from Zimbabwe six years ago in search of a better life. He became a taxified driver about two years ago, but on the 26th of April, his dreams of a better future ended tragically. He was shot and killed while on a trip in Johannesburg South. The day after his murder, Uber and taxified drivers took to the streets of Tembisa in protest of what they believed to be orchestrated violence aimed at them. Recently, there have been rising tensions between e-hailing drivers and meter taxi drivers in Tembisa in the east of Johannesburg. Now, some drivers say the killing of Gajeni could be a tipping point in the violence. One of our drivers, uh, the taxified drivers, an Uber partner, was shot after he was requested and then he took a trip uh, to uh, Southgate and then he came back. Uh, it was a private trip when he came back. When he came back uh, after the incident, uh, then after he dropped that person, after uh, some few minutes, they hear the, the gunshot and uh, Gajeni was screaming outside asking for help from the neighborhood. Then when they go outside, they found that uh, Gajeni was uh, shot dead. Do you believe that this is part of the war between the meter taxis and the Uber and taxi drivers? Uh, we're still waiting for the investiga uh, investiga uh, investigation of the police. Uh, we can't say, uh, we can't point fingers right now, but uh, all we're going to ask uh, from the police is to do the thoroughly investigation. What is the feeling amongst the other drivers after this incident? We are feeling very sad uh, about that. Uh, we are pleading to the government uh, for help, to help us and try to find the, all those uh, uh, the mischievous people who are doing all those mischievous uh, things to help us in order to find those culprits who are, who are uh, continuing uh, doing those uh, kind of things that are bad. We gathered here, it's a very, very sad day. We've had other deaths, but this one I think has hit home because a lot of you knew him. We need help. We need help from the police, we need help from the government and we cannot have this any longer. We have cases, nothing happens, there's no conclusion, and, you know, we're dying like flies, guys. The anger felt by these drivers is tangible. Some of them have decided to arm themselves. There are more e-hailing drivers in Tembisa than meter taxis. E-hailing is a process of ordering a car taxi via a mobile device. The convoy arrives at the home of the deceased to offer their condolences. Enough is enough, is the angry chant of these Uber and taxified drivers as they come to pay their respects to the families of the most recent victim of the ongoing violence. Moi Khacheni was killed in the early hours of this morning in Johannesburg South in what clearly resembles a calculated hit. These are amongst the approximately 20,000 e-hailing drivers in the country who found themselves unemployed prior to joining the sector. They say they are tired of being attacked or living in fear.
Solidarity At Gajeni's home, his family is left in disbelief having lost their breadwinner. For his sister, the pain is too much to bear. His younger brother Bongani in Lovu says his brother was thinking of leaving the industry because of the risks associated with it. He was at work when he heard the news of his brother's passing. H, we heard on news that they shot him. He went to uh, drop off a, a client and then apparently I don't know what went wrong there. And then we had, we had some news that my brother has been shot. It affects us a lot because now we need to take care of kids. I mean, the way he was staying, he used to pay rent, so now we need to sort out the rent. We need to take schools, kids to school. I mean, there's a big gap now. There's a big gap. Uh, very painful. It's very painful. It's very painful. So we're looking forward maybe if they, those, the, the one who killed him, if they might catch him, they face the law. Maybe oh, we can start feeling better. Because at the moment we don't know what was the motion. Why did they kill him? Bongani has been making arrangements to take his brother back to Zimbabwe for his final resting place. Gajeni is the sixth e-hailing driver to be killed this year. Since e-hailing has come to South Africa, there have been seven deaths this year. Others have not died but have been left scarred for life. South Africa is not the only country where these drivers face hostility. Attacks have also been reported in Australia, United Kingdom and Chicago. At his memorial service, only his colleagues could be seen. The bosses did not attend. He left behind his wife and three children. Corruption both in the public and the private sectors needs to be combated. Where there are clear cases, cases of uh, wrong that has been done, that must commence immediately. Something is being done about corruption in our currency, even though it strengthened dramatically after the ANC's recent elective conference, could conceivably go, go stronger yet. He had a soul that would not be for sale. Stay tuned to Your World for your final news roundup, Monday to Sunday at 21.30. SABCnews.com is your one-stop digital portal to all the news you need. With a website that is easy to use on mobile, SABC News prides itself in being the primary source of public service content across multiple platforms. Watch live streams of all the big news events on the SABC News YouTube channel, which is one of the most viewed South African YouTube channels globally. And catch up on the best of SABC television and radio news. Follow breaking news on all of the SABC News social media platforms, interact with SABC News on Facebook, and stay connected on Twitter for the latest headlines and real-time updates by our reporters. SABC News, everywhere.
Forty-four-year-old Hebe Sakati was a well-known singer in Soweto who was loved and respected by his community and church. He was also a member of the JMPD choir which performed all over Gauteng. A week ago, Hebe went missing, his body was nowhere, but his burnt-out car was found abandoned at this open field in Snake Park. A day later, his body was discovered at a government mortuary in Soweto. He had been shot twice. I think the, the worst part is, is how it happened. I mean, I, I suppose we all know, well, someday we, we all going to go through the same journey. But actually what has been uncomforting, it's the manner that it has happened. So the suspicion is, and it's really a suspicion from what, is it th what we think, they shot him because he likely would have known the people and he didn't want them to, they didn't want him to identify them afterwards. Angela Laboa is the taxify partner who employed Heavy a few years ago. She says she saw it as an opportunity to improve her financial status. I saw it as an opportunity to make extra money, so I thought, no, let me join. And when I decided to join, I approached Heavy because his he doesn't have work, he's not employed. So I approached him to say, um, do you know about Taxify, Uber thing? He says, yes, I know. I'd like to join the Uber thing, the Taxify thing. And he said, okay, um, do you mind driving for me because you've always been our driver? No problem, sister. Let's go into the business. After this tragedy, she blames herself for the tragedy that befell her brother. I regret why I went into this industry. Heaven would be alive today. If it was not because of me, this wouldn't have happened. My daughter has lost an uncle because of the incident. I've lost a brother. My mother has lost a son. Other drivers like Tami Mkize, who is an Uber driver, have had narrow escapes from violent attacks by criminals pretending to be passengers. And then we drove in the car, we were talking, you know, there was no sign that anything can happen, you know. We were just talking and talking until we arrived there, in the same spot that I picked them up. And then when I stopped the car, the only thing I knew, I knew I, I only had the knife. I was stabbed and stabbed, I was butchered 23 times, you know. Eventually after I done, they threw up me out of the car and took my car and they took off and then I was I left there to die and then I screamed for help for almost some time. I think it could be an hour trying to get them. No one came. After some time I only see the lights and then it was only the, the, the police van. I could feel that, you know, my, my breath is just going away from me, you know. But I my kids, they kept me going so that I can't die today, you know. They stabbed me uh, right on my, just under my, my, my arm. They stabbed all these places. They stabbed me right in the back. They stabbed me right to the heart, to the heart and here in my shoulders. And then, and right in the head, you know. Tommy's attacker has been arrested, but was recently released on bail. Despite his ordeal, he still continues to drive as it is his only source of income. Over 5% of the world's population of 360 million people has disabling hearing loss. Sometimes babies are born that, that can't hear. Yeah. And especially during the pregnancy where there's some infections that a mom could pick up that can actually transmit that damage to the ear and those children can be born deaf. I don't look at myself as a disabled person. I looked at myself as Bruno, not with a disability. I don't have barriers. I use South African sign language because I have a language. And unfortunately, we need to talk to the teenagers and the young people out there. I know it's now fine to go to the concerts and listen to that loud music, but you're actually damaging those little hair cells all the time. And you're not going to pay the price now. You're going to pay the price when you turn 45, 50. Mm. And, and then all of a sudden, we're going to see the damage done. For all your health news, join Health Talk every Saturday from 9 to 10.
We make sure to be when news is happening, both locally and globally. For the latest business news, stay with us. From South Africa to the world, we've got all your latest sporting news. Don't miss our weather updates at every hour. Stay tuned to News Today, Monday to Friday, from 3 to 5.30 p.m. here on ACBC News. We give you a front row seat to all the local and international entertainment news on trends every Saturday from 12 to 1. Rosebank in Johannesburg North is one of the hotspots where most taxify and Uber drivers are reluctant to make pickups from. There has been fierce competition for clients between them and meter taxi drivers. Solomon Mokwena is part of the Meter Taxi Association. He has been in this business for almost 20 years and complains that the arrival of e-hailing companies has decreased his income considerably. <laughs> Are you guys involved in Omansi? Are you involved? Right. Lent so, Ramanya Makamu Yavu, Mamauti, Mamita taxi drivers are involved to Bulalin Laba Abashonai. Yavoma, Mogoba, Ekinisun, Lempilena, E. Paraguay to Nama, Nama Upa, Nama, 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 Taxi Five. Kamoto Tiro is an e hailing driver who has also survived an acid attack suspected to be linked to the meter taxi drivers. On the way, he didn't say much things. Actually, he was holding just uh, a bottle okay, hold, uh, with a chemical inside. He said to me, do you don't mind if I drink in your car? I said, no, it's fine. And only later on to find out that that person was not having alcohol with that bottle. He was having an, a chemical acid inside. As we were driving along Long Road, he was directing me where to turn left and like that. Uh, there's uh, some uh, golf course uh, along that road. That's where he said stop the car from nowhere, the street lights were off. And when I tried to ask why here, because there's no houses, he didn't say wait, he just put me with an acid on my side. As I tried to push and block him uh, with my hands as well, he turned the bottle into my hands and then I started itching. He said to me, get out of the car. As I was running away out of the car, trying to run away, he set me alight. Uh, and then I was screaming by that night and he was busy laughing. And he took the car, he left me there. What do you believe the motive was for the attack? Um, up to so far, I don't know because it was a white man. And then uh, I'm trying to figure it out what might drive him to, to do that. But I believe for, uh, until I found him or until the police found him, he's the only person who can explain to us if he was working with someone or he was racist or he was being sent by some people. Teresa Manchik is the co-founder of the industry advocacy group called The Movement. She blames cash trips for the increased crimes against the drivers. 
They started taking cash, um, which we understand. However, they don't take any kind of ID. So what's happened is it's left a gap for criminals. If someone had to sign up with a credit card, there is a way to trace them. However, you can get a SIM card and um, an email address and Bob's your uncle. So criminals are just having a field day. Hijackers, you know, hijacking is rife. Um, and, you know, they don't have to stand outside a driveway anymore. They can order and they can even see what car they want. Um, and then what's happening all the time is drivers are getting robbed, usually at gunpoint or knife point. They know that we carry good phones. Sometimes we have cash. So that's happening in an incident lately, which is pretty chilling. Uh, one of the drivers, we found out that a client had bought him some coke at McDonald's and actually had laced it with the date rape drug. What they have done is they've introduced a cash trip indicator, which at least, um, you know, you know if something's a cash trip and whether you do want to take the risk. We do strongly feel that Taxify has to introduce the same thing, because um, as I say, it's really mostly on cash trips that a lot of these incidences are happening. Taxify says that they are finding a solution to the cash problem, but that they cannot deny consumers who use cash. So every rider that comes onto the platform now, we, they need to put in their name as well as their cell phone number. We then verify that that cell phone number is actually theirs. So what we're doing is relying there on the back of the, the RECA uh, and there, thereby the mobile network operators have the, the identity of these individuals as well as the home address. So if there are any issues, then that is that second layer, additional layer of authentication. What we've also done in the app is open up debit cards and ATM cards to be able to work on the app as well. And this is part of our commitment for our own business, for our drivers uh, to get more card trips and less cash that's happening. But at the end of the day, the consumers and the clients are the ones who are asking for the cash trips. So Namola is an app that provides emergency response when you need it most at the push of a button. Taxify has entered into a partnership with Namola where their functionality is going to be integrated onto our app, which means that the drivers will be able to push that SOS button and be able to get an agent to call them right away. Their uh, GPS location will be tracked the entire time, and should there be an issue, uh, armed response will be sent to their location to assist them uh, in the event of an emergency. There's been concern about the lack of police action to effectively deal with the crimes. How far are the police in investigating the recent murders of Moi Gacheni and Hevi Sakati? So far, all those circumstances of the incident are going to be investigated and we are going to follow each and every uh, information which comes to us to make sure that uh, there, there is an uh, arrest in the matter. We met one of the drivers and he told us that one of the guys who attacked him was released without his consent, without him knowing. What do you have to say about that? When um, the issue of uh, not notifying it's what we can uh, make a follow-up from the investigating officer uh, to make sure that uh, that uh, a victim is aware of the processes, uh, uh, what takes place at court. There is also concern about the violation of labour rights and unfair reimbursement system in the sector. Drivers are often online 12 hours, 14 hours, 15 hours, even 18 hours. On weekends, some drivers don't sleep at all. Chasing target. Now, this puts the driver's life in danger. It puts the general public in danger, the riders' lives in danger, because nobody wants to be in the car of somebody who hasn't slept. Fatigue is a killer. The labor issues we've identified is hours online versus your income. Uh, there's been many reports of people who be online for, for five hours, no, no, sorry, for over 12 hours and will have only turned over 500 rand. Now, if you've been online and you've only turned over 500 rand, depending on which app you're on, the first 25% isn't yours, it's going to the app hailer, All right? And then you need to take away your fuel, your insurance costs from that, your, your, your food costs from that. And then what remains, you need to divide <laughs> that one or two hundred rand into 12 hours. Those numbers, those numbers are worse than slavery. 
One of the main things is um, being recognised under labour law, um, having paid holidays. Um, you know, Uber's take, and this is what they'll say to you, is they'll say, oh, it's flexible hours and drivers love the flexible hours. And they'll have some drivers who say, yes, we love the flexible hours. But if I have to take a sample of a hundred drivers, they're going to say to you, in fact, our hours are not flexible because in order to make any money, we have to be on the road for 12 to 14 hours. Um, so, you know, a minimum wage, um, you know, there's um, a whole bunch of various factors, any pension fund, medical aid. Uber says they are introducing measures to deal with long hours and insists that the Labour Court vindicated their view that these drivers are not employees. So, yes, I think it's important that drivers don't drive when they're feeling drowsy um, and we are going to be implementing new functionality. I can't talk to it in too much detail, but from next week, which is going to ensure that drivers spend a responsible um, amount of time on the road. The Labour Court actually overruled the CCMA ruling, stating that these individuals were not employees of Uber South Africa. Um, I think this may have represented the view or the intention of a small number of drivers, but the majority of partners using our application enjoy the fact that they have flexibility, that they can choose when to work and where to work. As the list of people losing their lives or getting attacked continues to grow, the state has held meetings with stakeholders, but hopes regulation will deal with the challenges. Well, the bill has been passed by um, the National Assembly. It will still go to the National Council of Provinces for concurrence. And uh, it is at that time that it will be made uh, uh, the law. Uh, however, this progress that you have noted indicates to us that we are serious about dealing with the um, challenges that we are facing in the public transport uh, industry, but also that we are moving uh, to an era where we are embracing technology and innovation, which will ultimately improve the services that we offer uh, in the public transport arena. As the Gacheni family finally took his spirit to its final resting place in Zimbabwe, they say they prefer to only remember him as a hard-working man who sought to make an honest living to provide for his family.